Welcome to the BXG podcast, the podcast where pop culture and nerd culture meet at the nexus of the universe and are melded as seamlessly as Marvel movies and French cuisine, but not in the way that you might think. I am one of your hosts, the Alpha Dona guy, Brenton Bestwick, alongside my co host, a man who's out there six days a week delivering that Yuhu, Gregory T. Filson III. Greg, how are you tonight? Uh, doing well uh, in beautiful Santa Cruz right now, visiting my mom. So it's been a good couple of days so far. Uh, yeah, it's nice. Went to the beach, uh, went to the little little boardwalk area didn't ride any of the rides uh but took a nice walk around and just uh enjoyed the day how are you brenton I, for- I forgot you were doing that you did tell me that you would be recording from a different location than remote usual Remote location yeah 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 remote location so if you cut out <clears throat> or anything you know that that's that's why we'll know yeah something happened i think it should be okay i tested a couple things um it should be okay it won't be primo but it'll be okay we'll get the job done yeah uh yeah so that's good santa cruz how far is that away from you uh about four hours north. oh okay that's not yeah. too too bad then so about a little hour and a half two hours south of san francisco okay yeah i had a um had a little bit of a journey this week this past weekend that i went on a uh, little va- little relaxation. I call it more of a relaxation than a vacation. Okay. Uh, we we stayed in an, uh, my my wife and I stayed in an Amish treehouse. It was very nice, and uh, the main objective was just to get like just quiet and stuff. So no kids involved in this situation. No. no. And so we just you know we watched some TV, did whatever. Um. And I told her I was like. The next time I say I want to do this, just remind me of this because this isn't great. Because <laughs> we're kind of like doers when we go places. And, like, you know, we had uh, recently went to Niagara Falls, this past year we went to Disney, we've, you know, cities. And, like, when we just try to go somewhere that's just like, okay, we're just going to like hang out. It never really winds up super great. And that kind of happened. It was Amish country. And believe it or not, not a lot to do in Amish country. Oh, did you make any cheese with butter? It, that'd have been cool. No, we. Uh, I'm not gonna get like I don't want to get too far in the weeds, but there is, and I'll be honest with you, I don't even remember the name of the place. But this was in Berlin, Ohio, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, sure. Which is like known. It's like that and Lancaster, are like the two biggest Amish places in the country, or whatever. And. um we went to this place to eat and we slept in. So we missed breakfast and we went to lunch and she got like Amish, like Amish made like chicken gravy with biscuit, like whatever. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I just wanted a burger. That's all I mm-hmm. wanted. I was hungry. I wanted a burger. I wanted a cheeseburger, bacon cheeseburger. And I got the most Aldi ass burger that I've ever eaten in my entire life. Like the buns were Aldi. <laughs> The the bacon was pre cooked, warmed over Aldi. The burger was Aldi. The American cheese was Aldi. It just it tasted like bootleg vitamins, and I just it was the most like I said the most Aldi ass burger that I've ever eaten in my entire life, and um, that kind of summed up my whole trip really. That's too bad. I, we're I mean I'm a big doer. I have to do stuff. That's just my fidgety nature. So I understand that. Brenton, like mm. sitting there, I can only yeah. like watch a TV or read my book for so so long. I get that right. part of it. It's kind of my thing where like I live by the beach and yeah. I rarely go to the beach. I don't need yeah. to go to the beach. I like just the idea that I can go to the beach more than the actual going oh, yeah. to the beach. I like going to the beach <laughs> because I like getting in the water. But that's mm, doing right. something. You know what I mean? I'm not, I can't, I'm not the guy that sits on the beach. I have to, even at the beach where you're supposed to be relaxing, I have to like get in the water, do whatever. Right. Yeah. But um, stopped at the pro, f- pro football hall of fame on the way back. And that was kind of, it was fun. It was cool. Not as cool as Cooperstown. If you yeah, get both Cooperstown is superior. Um, but yeah, other than that, it was just nice to get, a, you know, get away a couple quiet days or whatever, and then back to the grind. But, uh, yeah, so that was that, but 
there was, was some big news over the weekend. There was. Yeah, there's some big news. There was the. Um, <laughs> are you are you okay? You look you look out of it. You all right? I'm okay. Are you sure? I'm just hot. I was just hot. Sorry. I can't get away from just not being hot all the time for some reason. Even though I'm cold all the time, it, when we do the show, for a reason, wherever I'm at, it has to be 100 degrees. So I'm just on fire right now. But I'm fine other than that, friend. Sorry. Oh, you're good. Okay. You don't have anything to apologize for. <laughs> I just I can't get over the fact that like I'll sit in our house all day and it'll be fine. And then we do record the pod and it decides to be 100 and then I'm in the maybe it's a nerve. Here. Maybe it's a nervous thing. I don't, but it's not. That's not how I normally react to nervousness. Nervousness, I will like just ramble for ever. We know, right? I get upset, <laughs> but like I'm not upset or anything. No, right. I'm just annoyed that I'm hot more than anything because I'm cold right. all the time. So you know, the, our room just hot though. It was hot last night. It's hard to sleep. So. Yeah, but I'm good. There was I had a hard there. time. I had a hard time sleeping too because I forgot to bring my sleeping meds. So, oh. yeah, it was rough. Yeah, it was bad. Uh, but there was some big news over the course of the last however many days. Comic Con, San Diego, Comic Con. Yes, a whale's vagina, San Diego. Uh, the big Comic Con. Loads of Marvel news. A little bit lesser stuff. There was like the Shazam trailer uh it was confirmed that ben affleck is coming back for for a little bit more batman and aquaman too which is like that poor guy just let he doesn't want to do this anymore let's just not trot him out there you know what i mean yeah just cut the arm off it's okay yeah and that whole thing but i mean for the purpose of this podcast or this youtube channel um we are going to talk about what is behind us, the multiverse saga that was announced by Marvel. Uh, some news tidbits, if you just want to get, we'll just get right into it. A uh, little bit of tidbits with the news. Phase four will end. Uh, well, first of all, phase four through six are officially uh, being known as the multiverse saga. Phase four will end this November with Black Panther Wakanda Forever, which there was a trailer for. We'll get into that here in a bit. Um, phase five will begin with Ant-Man, uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, and end with, with Thunderbolts. July 26, 2024, a mere two months before my 40th birthday, uh, and then all we know, <clears throat> excuse me, about phases uh, five, or I'm sorry, phase six right now is that it will begin with the Fantastic Four and it will end <clears throat> with the Avengers, the Kang Dynasty and the Avengers Secret War, which we'll also get into. Uh, there were some other announcements, um, dates given to some things and then some just general announcements uh, Agatha Coven of Chaos, the will be a Disney Plus series starring Catherine Hahn, uh, reprising her role as Agatha Harkness. Blade, uh, Captain America 4, uh, officially known as Captain America New World Order, with Anthony Mackie starring in the role, um, was announced. Daredevil with Charlie Cox as the Disney Plus, not really a reboot, but more of just a uh, I believe a continuation of um, the uh, the Netflix series will be a Disney Plus show, eighteen episodes long. Uh, they confirmed Echo, uh, Guardians Volume Three, Ironheart, Loki Season Two, Secret Invasion, uh, and then the big announcements outside of um, the uh, the Captain America film is uh, Thunderbolts. Fantastic Four, Kang Dynasty, and um, Secret Wars. So there's been a lot of, um, <clears throat> and then there's been a lot of uh, tidbits that have come come out through uh, various interviews 
through uh, Feige and, you know, some of the different directors, things like that. James Gunn, um, the, uh, the Shang-Chi director will be directing Kang Dynasty, um, blah, blah, blah. Some other, like I said, some other sort of Fantastic Four will not be an origin story. Um, and that they're going to have Avengers movies are now just going to be saga cappers. So all of this sort of, and it's a lot to take in. The multiverse Uh, saga. It was a lot. I mean, it just, and I understand that like you have to do things like that when you are at Comic Con, but it almost felt like they knew that people were like, where is this going? Right. We need to show that we have direction and that we're not just freewheeling because I think a lot of people I think even ourselves included probably thought that um and it's it's just it was so much and I kept texting you and I was like oh they released this and then it just became a thing where I was like we both were like this is all too much and I can't just keep (laughs) I was like realized I just can't keep sending you this over and over again like obviously you're paying attention too and it was just weird how much stuff I don't know if I've ever seen that marvel but anybody ever put this much stuff out in one sitting like here it goes here's everything and it's nice to know that you know we have direction i just don't know if we needed this much you know you mentioned about uh you're turning 40 like the kang dynasty comes out on Mm my 40th birthday right and i was like yeah i know that that's three years maybe that's not that long but it is a long like three years from now is a long time i mean it's just like to know that far in advance of what we're getting is kind of crazy to me yeah i don't it doesn't make me any more or less excited i guess i think they definitely thought people like people were losing their mind on twitter like, oh my gosh you know, blah 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 and it's like, we don't even know who anybody is in these movies a lot of them yeah we don't know a lot it, about a lot and, <laughs> and that's, yeah that's what i mean it's just like we just don't we don't know who the actual avengers will be at this point we just right. don't and i understand that that's maybe part of the excitement but this isn't you know, when we knew Infinity War and, you know, was starting and then we were going to get Endgame, we know who those people are going to be, like, you know, and so I think, I, if anything, it probably leaves me with more questions than answers, which is weird, and I, I still, you know, I'm, I'm, as, I'm excited about this stuff, I guess, as much as I can be, not to the level that I was with Endgame, or, you know, even Infinity War, really, but it's just, it felt like they were trying to make up for something, and that was weird. I agree with you. And I think that what they're trying to make up for is that this train is losing steam. And I think that we talked last week with Thor and Miss Marvel that there's been uh, 46 hours of content so far in phase four with She-Hulk and now Black Panther to come that There's a decided, I I definitely think that there's Marvel fatigue at this point Sure. and announcing some of this stuff, especially the two, especially fantastic four, which we already knew. I mean, that wasn't like a, a, like a new announcement that was like further confirmation or whatever, but the fact that they're announcing Avengers movies and their titles this far in advance raises some red flags for me that they understand that this this is there's fatigue the train's losing steam and they need to whip up some excitement and like w- what you said though is you know people are losing their mind on twitter's this is in hall h so it's like the big you know the big deal stuff but i just i can't shake the feeling that you know they are trying with especially with some of these big announcements like you know the new um captain america and daredevil that everybody wanted thunderbolts and then the two avengers movies is i feel like they they are trying to convince us that they are serving us kool-aid when all they are really have been serving us since endgame now is just crystal light right and i think that i think that this showing this much this far in advance is a is a panic move for them and I'm like the more that I've sat here and thought about it after all these announcements were made, I don't know. Like we've both said that we feel like they should have just ended after Endgame. 
and gone away or, you know, whatever, just shut it down for a while. But like you said last week, they can't stop. And it's getting to the point where it's like <laughs> getting to the point where it's too big to fail. Um, that we are choosing making a lifestyle choice to keep up with this. Cause I'm looking at, I'm looking at the, the screen that was shown in hall H uh, E's in front of it. Um, it's on Twitter. I'm looking at the phase five thing and it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, either movies or TV shows. And I don't even think what ifs on there. And I think, and I'm pretty sure that's a phase five thing, but it's like, you mentioned this a while back that eventually there's going to be a turning point where we're, where we're just like, Oh, these just aren't any good anymore. Yeah. And I think we're <laughs> fast approaching that point where we're going to look back. It's almost like the X-Men movies. Cause when at the beginning of the X-Men movies, like the first three, it was like, Oh, these are, awesome you know i mean hugh jackman's wolverine and you know x-men 2 is great i think still to this day x-men 2 and spider-man 2 are some of the best superhero movies but like it got to the point where especially when they did the the younger cast or the you know the soft reboot whatever with the x-men movies with like um days of future past and x-men first class and stuff like that where it was just like these just aren't good and now it's kind of like we look now we're being forced to look back at the originals and going, are, were they good? Right. Now, I don't want to be in a point. <laughs> I don't want to get to a point where it's like, OK, this is the multiverse saga. And we look back at the Infinity Saga and we're like, well, was it even good? Like, were we crazy? Because this yeah. sucks. <laughs> and I just I'm getting to the point almost with with the different Marvel stuff. Like, I'm, you know, I'm going to see it. I'm going to watch it or whatever. But. I just don't think that it's uh, like this raises a lot of red flags for me just mm. because I, I think that this was a panic move to because they recently said that everything will be revealed within 10 months. Right. Mm. This was in 10 minutes. Right. It felt like, and it just seems to me like maybe the numbers on Thor were softer than they thought the numbers on strange were thought softer than they thought. And this was a panic move that they felt like, okay, we got to put most of our cards on the table. I mean, we'll keep a few back because there's some still uh, some open dates, especially with phase five or six, mm -hmm. sorry. But, and we know X-Men are coming, but we're going to lay down all the, the cards that we feel comfortable <laughs> laying down right now. And because we have to do something, we're in panic mode. That's just how I feel. I mean, I could be wrong. Oh, what do you, what do you no, think? I mean, like, I, I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't necessarily put myself in like panic mode, but it's like, I remember being just pumped I, for those movies, you know, in the Infinity Saga, just, you know, before even up to that, like all those movies made me excited. And you know, while I still liked, you know, Multiverse of Madness, and of course still like Spider-Man and Thor fine, like all those things were, you know, fine to me. Spider-Man was better than fine, but it's, it's, it's become now where, yes, I, obviously I saw all these movies before you and I started doing the podcast and everything like that. And it never felt like a job. And even while we've been doing the podcast, none of the stuff no. really felt like a job. And now like no. seeing, you know, seeing so much of it ahead of us. And I, you know, would have watched this stuff regardless. It just becomes this thing where like, it's sort of like, it kind of gave me that anxiety that you have when you like kind of know all the work that you have to do mm -hmm. for an actual job, you know, like, the, and you get like that, Oh, this is like what you have to do in the next three months. And at your you know, you're like, oh man, can I actually get this all done? And when I saw all that come out, I'm like, that is a lot of content. Like it, it's good to have content for the show, don't get me wrong, but it's just, you know, my mom asked me if I watched a certain movie, and I like just said I haven't watched it. And it was my thought was, and I didn't think about the time, it was like, I was just so busy doing stuff that like, you know, not that I feel like I have to, but it was just things I wanted to do for the show. And there's just so much Marvel stuff right now that sometimes I give myself like this kind of fatigue where I don't even watch stuff that I actually, you know, I, I wanted to watch yeah. this stuff anyhow, but you know what I mean? Where it's like, it was that there's just so much stuff. Sometimes I just need to get away from that. And this is where I felt like that. I had that kind of anxiety about it because I sent you the first thing and I don't even remember what I first sent you now looking back, but um, and then it's, 
it, it might have been it was one of the avengers ones i think it was one of the avengers and then yeah, i, I didn't know that they were like gonna say they i think they started with the avengers and then worked themselves back or something yeah. and then i realized they didn't i thought that's what they were doing then i realized they really just gave everybody everything yeah. on this massive all you eat buffet and that's the i think that's the thing it's not necessarily panic but it's kind of like the joke that like i heard like jerry seinfeld will ferrell say when uh, eating comedians and cars getting coffee it's like when you have all those menu options mm -hmm. that scares you you know yeah. at, a, at a restaurant and this feels like that where it's like there's so many options right now and so many things going forward that is a little scary mm -hmm. uh, they still haven't i would say they still haven't made anything bad yet eternals and we uh, well i'm sorry the eternals was not great um <laughs> that was not great I, I kind of just forget about that honestly that's sort of the funny well, i that saw happened. i actually saw a really 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 funny meme like 10 minutes before we started recording where it was the celestial with the hand like frozen popping out of the earth and it said yeah. there's been three movies and tv and two tv shows since this happened and nobody's talking about how there's an alien head and hand sticking out of the earth that's <laughs> it's so true it's so funny like i just i always kind of forget that that happened and you know, and I, I kind of forget a lot of the stuff that happened, like Black Widow happened and, yeah, you know, yeah. and it's just, it's, there's just been so much, so much content and, you know, I hope that it's all good. I really do. It's not like I'm going on here wishing this goes bad uh, or anything. Yeah. Like, I want it to be right. awesome. I right. want that feeling. I mean, I remember leaving Infinity War and leaving Endgame, just like two completely different emotions, but because you leave Infinity War kind of just like, what? You know, yeah. and then you leave Endgame just be like, that was cool. Like, you know, and just both times, like completely packed theaters, people cheering, people going nuts. And you got a little bit of that with Spider Man. And I will say yeah. there was a good amount of like interaction. Mm -hmm. And we're still, you know, so COVID winter thing. But yeah, I, that's not, that's what I like going to these movies for. And I just don't know if they're going to, build to that like i'm i'm obviously older than yeah. i was but i'm still like i still like this stuff this isn't gonna right. change yeah, like yeah, i'm, yeah. Gonna, I'm yeah. gonna like these things and i'm gonna like that feeling of going to theater will i necessarily like cheer or whatever when i'm older probably not but i will like that other people will be cheering and for it to be a thing now where it's like wow this is th you know i will be 40 yeah my, my 40 year will be when those avengers movies come out and that just sounds weird to me and not like oh because i'll be old it's just that's three years down the road. So I don't know. I mean, I, like I said, I'm not on full panic mode, but I'm like definitely looking at the menu and being like, that's a lot of options. Well, and I think that what, I think that what all that, as you said, all the options detracts from is we don't have time to stand still and appreciate mm -hmm. something because I, and I think to me, the one that I think the movie or, or whatever uh, that gets lost in the shuffle of phase four, as we now know it, is Shang-Chi. Right. Because Shang-Chi, honestly, right now, with what we've seen from phase four outside of Spider-Man, is probably my second favorite movie. Mm -hmm. And I think that it just got completely lost in the shuffle because it's like, okay, here's Shang-Chi, but here's a TV show. And now here's the Eternals and now here's Spider-Man and now here's another TV show. And now here's Dr. Strange. And now here's another TV show. And now here's Thor. It's just like before we would have like at least a few months right? to sit, because I remember the big four coming out of uh, leading up to the end of phase of the infinity saga, you got black Panther and then a couple months later, Black Panther was, I want to say February. I could be wrong on the dates. Might have been January. That sounds right. And then you get the summer blockbuster of Infinity War. And then they went away. They went away for months. And we didn't get anything again until Captain Marvel. And that was around like Christmas, January or whatever. We didn't even know the name of Endgame. I think it was Mar I think Captain Marvel came out in March. Yeah. I think it did. Is because yeah. it was like two months away from right a, a game. Yeah, but that was the we thing was like we didn't even know what it was called, mm -hmm. and we were like three, four months away, and we didn't even know what the name of Endgame was. We just knew, and I always said like, aside from the fact that you know we 
we knew we were getting another movie and we know kind of the inherent danger wasn't there. But in my opinion, and I've said this is that Avengers Infinity War is the Empire Strikes Back of this generation because right. the bad guy or the good guys lost. They got their teeth kicked in, right? And now it's like, hey, we're going to give you two Avengers movies. We're going to give them to you back to back. They're four years away, four or five years away. And these are the names. And to me, that's just like, that's a, that's a level of communication that is not where they were at just a few short years ago, because I honestly think, and I, and this is another thing I've said that they shouldn't have even had a trailer for Endgame. It should have just been a title splash and that's it. Don't right. show us anything. Yeah. And, and you know what? It still would have made $2.7 billion or, or how oh, yeah. much. <laughs> and I just feel as though like, it's they know the content's just not as strong right now and so they have to figure out a way to keep people engaged and i almost wonder if they threw out the fact that um the fact that the last avengers movie is secret wars to potentially put it into people's heads that some of the ogs could come back because oh, yeah. Secret wars if you if you follow both of the the you know the 1980s comic run as well as the 2000 uh, teen comic run it's it's freaking chaos number one because yeah. everybody's involved every character you can think of is involved with battle world and the cool thing about secret wars is that even though we get kang we know we're going to get kang kang dynasty and you know he's one of the um primary antagonists in the new ant-man movie and there's several iterations of kang that they can tap into or whatever but the cool thing the coolest thing about secret wars is we know who the bad guy is if you follow those comic books it's it's doom and you yeah. and i have said since thanos lost that dr doom should be the next big bad and so that is exciting mm -hmm. and i think that that's exciting on a level for for some of us who are more not quite hardcore but more than casual fans if that makes sense right. yeah but yeah i mean that's kind of I don't know. I'm, I'm, I have a level of concern with this. That's I just, where I'm and at. I think that's the one thing I'll say on Secret Wars, because I, when I saw that was the title and I knew that the storyline, I um, actually read the, the teens one. I, I don't think I read the 80s one. If I did, it was a long time ago. Uh, do you think we get RDJ or Chris Evans? Just going to throw I'll tell those you what. Guys, the big guys out, the big guys out there. <laughs> I, one of those I think is more likely than the other. RDJ? No. I think, uh, Evans, I think Evans okay. is more likely. He said that he'd be open to coming back as Human Torch from those movies. And okay. I think that with, with both Multiverse and Secret Wars at play or in play, I don't think literally anyone's off the table. I think Toby and Garfield are back on the table. I think Hugh Jackman's on the table. I think Patrick Stewart's on the table. I think RDJ and Evans, any of uh, Scarjo, they're all on the table. Any of the bad guys that have died are on the table. Like any anything, Thanos is on the table because the of the nature I'm, of that storyline. And, and I thought about this, and I will say this is something. And when I originally went through this, in my head, there was like this part of me where because I, I always think about the the exciting moments when Captain America catches you know the hammer and everything, mm -hmm. and people. And I thought the only the the biggest moment I could imagine and it came from Secret Wars is if, you know, uh, the shield goes flying and Chris Evans catches it. Yeah. That's or, gonna be a, if that happens, the theater may explode. Like so it could between, just. Well, between them and, and, and Stark. I mean, those are the right, two, right. you know. If, if if that was what I thought of, of like guys. immediately yeah. because that's one where you can see if the you know the, something flying and Chris Evans catching it. Because yeah. I don't know what would happen with RDJ would just be like he comes out of nowhere flying through the sky or something like that. But that yeah. shield is something that you just is just a symbol. There's right. an Iron Man symbol. I was just thinking of a symbol, a symbolic yeah, sure. Sure, sure, sure. thing. And I was just like, I could imagine like literally the roof coming off of a theater. If that happens, yeah. it would be, it, I would lose it. That'd be sick. I would love that. But I don't know if that yeah. would happen. It's like a wish thing. Cause I just really like Chris Evans as that character. Right. Yeah. So phase four ends yeah. here in just a few <laughs> months and it's hard to believe 
with how long the other phases were, you know, stretched as far as like the first phase was what, four years or something like that. And yeah, maybe three, but yeah, I mean, they're going to just going to, they're not going to hop off this, this train, but I feel like they, they sense that you know, the numbers are softening a little bit and they got to do something. They got to do a little bit of damage control. And I think throwing out not one, but two Avengers movie is the best damage control that they can do other than X-Men, other than X-Men. Right. That's, you know, so, but we will move on to our movie review of the week. And our movie review of the week is uh, the gray man starring MCU royalty that we were just discussing, Chris Evans, along with Ryan Gosling and uh, Anna Diarmas, directed by uh, the Russo brothers, Joel and Anthony. And this is a story of a secret uh, hit squad operated by the CIA. And uh, one of the one of the men, one of the assassins, Sierra Six, played by Mr. Gosling. Um, find some delicate information and they turn to sociopathic CIA dropout Lloyd. What was his last name? I think it starts with an H Holmes. Holmes, Yeah. I think that's right. I think that's yeah. Yeah. And all sorts of, uh, all sorts of madness ensues. So, uh, your, what were your thoughts on the gray man, the gray, okay, man, which so is I'll, confirmed. I'll add before I, I start, I'm sorry to cut you yeah, off, but confirmed fine. to um, already have a sequel in development and uh, Lloyd Hansen, but already have a sequel and okay. a spin-off in development. Wow. Um, so for seven. I, I, I was listening to uh, a movie podcast where we were talking about like a certain person just like, isn't in on the joke like the lead actor isn't in on a joke and that can be like good for a movie or bad but like in this particular case it was good they're also talking about movies where like the actors are in on the joke and like that's okay because it's just the movie maybe is ridiculous and you just do certain things you look a certain way and i immediately it was after watching the gray man but i was like oh this is where the gray man kind of comes in it's like Brian Gosling and Chris Evans are like in on the joke of this being kind of insane. And that's okay. Like you're almost like they're all, you've got Chris Evans with the ridiculous mustache and he's wearing like really tight clothes, just like super tight clothes. And it's just, there's something that's like almost like a character character about him. And Ryan Gosling is, you know, basically invincible and, and just, and, they're, and he's like silent and all these like kind of weird things about him where it's just, they're so in on like being almost superheroes that aren't superheroes and yet in it's directed by superhero actors or directors and yet it isn't a superhero movie and that's kind of the joke to me and why i thought this movie was just insane i don't like it was entertaining it, obviously i don't i wouldn't say it was good it like a lot of stuff happened <laughs> and i'm not sure if i understood what was happening a lot of times I was, but it just, it was a movie that just didn't stop either, you know, and and that was the funny thing to me, but I think for me, that was the best, and like I said, it happened, I listened to this podcast after watching this, I think that was the best way, it was like, it felt like all the characters were in on this joke of this movie, to whatever degree it is, and it probably, they probably already knew it was like going to have a sequel before, while they were filming or whatever, and it's just like, well, we'll just have this movie, and like, whatever happens, happens. And I'll make it, I'll get a paycheck and we'll move on. We'll look ridiculous. And that's fine. Cause this is kind of what this movie is. So I think it was ridiculous. It didn't stop. And like I said, I don't think it was good, but it was entertaining. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I think. Um, I, I think that the Russo brothers know how to direct an action set piece. Mm. <clears throat> I don't think that they know how to do much outside of that, at least in the movie space. Cause I know that they did like right. community and, and stuff like that, but I just, 
was it entertaining sometimes there it got to the point where some of it was just like too much it was just like too right. much at times and i really felt the the scene and we're just gonna spoil the shit out of this so you know sure. sk- skip forward i don't know 10 15 minutes to our next review which is for the tv show the bear but the scene in which he was handcuffed to the bench was just like, it was just, it was too much. It was a bridge too far for me. And I think it was, you know, like you said, Ryan Gosling's Sierra six was essentially invincible in like a way that I haven't seen in an action movie since Liam Neeson and taken. Like it was just, it was just bonkers how, like he got the final fight scene, he gets stabbed like seven times. He's just, ah, it's a lot of blood. It's a lot of blood. It, it cracked me up. Like, I literally was laughing at that voice. Like, he did he? And I think, was he actually stabbed? Like, then I was like recounting, like, am I losing it? Yeah. Just quickly, I thought he was stabbed like six times, you know, like mm-hmm. he said. And then it's, but he's not reacting to it. And I was like, that's the whole thing where it's like, it is they're just in on this joke of this movie yeah he, i've never read this book or anything and maybe the book's yeah it is a, yeah it is a book um i i'll tell you what the, where it lost me for good as far as me thinking that it was at all salvageable as a decent piece of cinema and not just a basically a michael bay movie sure was when at the end of the part or the the handcuffed on the bench scene where she picks him up in the evidently indestructible uh, vehicle, according to the one character and everything just like city blocks blown, blown apart. The only logical explanation is if Optimus prime was stomping through this city and he stops and turns around and looks at it and does an action man pose and then gets back in the car. I was like, okay, I'm done. Right. (laughs) Because I honestly thought that there that there was an opportunity for there to actually be a somewhat compelling story of we're gonna find the we're gonna make a team of guys almost like the Suicide Squad, right? Where it was like guys who are criminals who have displayed some of the characteristics that are uh, you know have the intangibles to fit this particular role. And, but they didn't really explain that at all. And it was just, <clears throat> it was a Michael Bay movie. This was like a bad born movie. That's what this reminded me of. It was like a bad born movie and born mm-hmm. movies are just bad mission impossible movies. Right. So right. this was like, if, if Jason Bourne is the uh, poor man's mission impossible, then I guess the gray man was like the homeless man's mission impossible. Yeah. But <laughs> I feel part of me too is starting to feel like, you know, outside of Lightyear, which was just a voice performance, but Chris Evans is just like taking these roles where he was like, I was Captain America. I was you know, stood for everything that was good. And now I have to be a sleazeball. Right. Cause that's how and he kind of was in Knives Out too. Well, he's, he was a total sleazeball in Knives Out. And it's like he's good at being sleazy. That's kind of like the funny thing about it. And I don't like know the, that he is. Well, what I mean, what I mean is that he enjoys it. That's like the thing that I think like, and that's the joke behind it is like, he was freaking Captain America. And so like the whole joke behind it is like, I have to be the sleazeball, but I, you'll never not think of me as Captain America. And that's what I mean. Like, that's where it's like the joke is there. And it's like, he is enjoying, like he's chewing on the scenery in like a, in a, it, not a great way. He's just like, I have to like do this now because there's, there's really no other way for him to do it. He has to be a sleazeball he almost feels like at this point because he was that's what i mean is he feels like it but i don't think that that's the case i don't know it has to be that and it's It's kind of a bummer he enjoys it so much it's so funny yeah i guess but i don't know Uh, yeah i mean the thing i thought about with this movie i wish they would have maybe reversed the rules like gosling is the sleazeball because i don't like he's not known as a hero or, like, he's just kind of there. I mean, you know, in the aughts, he did more of, like, these kind of dramatic movies. And he's known as, like, a nice guy and things like that. But I think it's a little easier to take Chris, like, it's easier to probably say you could root for Chris Evans as, like, the good guy, even though there's not really a good guy in this. I don't know. It was just a weird, yeah, it was a weird I don't, movie. 
It was just a weird. How do you? Movie. But but then it becomes <laughs> oh, it's a it's a movie directed by the Russo brothers where one spy is trying to kill another spy and one of them is Chris Evans. How is this not just Winter Soldier? Right. And you I know, call it and spy I think versus that, spy. When people ask me what it was about, I was like, I think it's just like spy versus spy. You remember that comic book? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They made a movie of that too, I think. Yeah. Um, some of the secondary characters we can get into in the Armas played the, I would say probably the most tertiary character. Yeah. Um, in the film, a uh, another CIA operative, um, Danny Miranda, Billy Bob Thornton as Fitzroy, uh, Jessica Henwick as Suzanne Brewer. Um, how do you say the Bridgerton guy's name? Is it it's Regé Jean? I think it's Regé Re- Jean, yeah, Regé Jean. Jean, yeah, it's R E G. And then E with a accent mark, and then Jean Page. So Rajon Page. That's probably it. I don't really know. Yeah, he was CAI, CIA, whatever. Carmichael, and that was the thing is like I felt like the the story even kind of followed along with like the born. We got to get rid of this guy, right? Sort of thing. <laughs> but Billy Bob was fine. I felt like the acting from a lot of those other characters was just like comically over the top i was genuinely excited for this and i and i think that this is you have said this many times is this is exactly as good as this movie could have been for a netflix movie Mm -hmm. right yeah if this movie comes out in theaters i I guarantee if this was a theater release movie like only theater release because it came out in theaters first and then netflix yeah yeah yeah. If this was just a theater release, the movie's different. They just do it differently. But yeah, I really I do know. think that. But they, they're like, nah, whatever. It's a paycheck and it's just move on. And no one will think about, you know, it was the number one movie all week. And yeah. that's good. And that's all they really care about with these kind of things. So, so uh, put a score on The Gray Man. I will give it, because it's not like terrible. It was a thing where like, I wasn't upset after watching it. I'll, I kind of was. Okay. I kind of was. I wouldn't say I was upset. I, it's a thing. I wasn't upset. I was disappointed. Yeah. That's, you know, that kind of thing. So I will give it, I think the highest it could have been is like a seven. I think the highest possible could have been is a seven. For me, it ends up being like a five. It's just like very baseline. Like you said, like this, it, 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 there was just nothing. There was nothing great. There was nothing great about There was to me never anything bad. It was just always kind of mid. The entire level it just never <laughs> i fucking hate just, that term but okay but it but if like there's no other way to say it it's just mid-level just me, say mid-level time. or mid-tier okay and it just never or it never middling like it was probably like a 5.5 a 4.5 a 5 it just kind of kept doing that and just like wiggle it its way the whole <laughs> it was that's what i would give it i yeah i don't perfectly <sighs> average See, to me, though, perfectly, like, I, this is where, this is why I don't like giving things scores. And we talked about, we're not going to give scores, but then you can't not give scores. Yeah. And it's like, uh, I would it's do it to a, say, it's not a five out of a 10 on a test. Right. It's a C for me, I guess is another way you can look at it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, you see, like, way. I would give it like a six. Okay. Like, a, yeah, like a six. Like you said, the best this movie was probably going to be was like a seven but the 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 secondary characters and the like you said the the movie never let up and it was just at times it was just like listen i know what this is but how about a little bit of plot just a little bit yeah right (laughs) just a little bit you're throwing you are kind of thrown in and you said this you're trying to throw in like expecting to know what this is about like you guys know, was, right? Like, oh, yeah. I've never heard of this. Hey, so. you know what? Here's this guy. He's a spy. Let me tell you this story. He's a spy. He was a criminal, but now he's a spy. We're right. going to hint around at that, but we're not going to exactly tell you what it's going to be. And then here's this guy. He's crazy. That's all you need to know. You just need to know that he's crazy. Okay. And right. the crazy guy is going to go after <laughs> this guy. You're not hundred percent sure why, but this is what it is. Nope. Just trust us. It's going to be fine. And like, it was 
I'm telling you, man, it was, it was like three unnecessarily large explosions away from being a, just a piece of shit Michael Bay movie. Yeah, it really was. And it's like, I don't, I just don't like the Michael Bay movies. So it's just, you no, know, there's, they're terrible because it's right. And I know people are like entertained. I don't even get entertained by those movies, to be honest. Like, it's just, I want them to end it. I like the first, uh, four, I like the first Transformers movie. And that feels like a million years. Ago. The first one, because it was, it was. Years but it was funny. Like that, just you know, it, I forgot. I forgot. Like that, I, I actually enjoyed that too. Um, yeah, it's just it's funny. Like I said, it's a to me, it's very right down the middle of the road. Um, I don't. It, it's a perfect Netflix movie. It's yeah. And I, 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 I think that that's before, fair. But, actually, I think that's what, fair. And and to say a five point zero or see, but like remember, sorry, stumbled there. Remember when? Netflix just had like these really mid-level movies or they just mailed you DVDs or they just mailed you DVDs. And like, that was, I guess but when they just made their, when they first started making movies, they were just fine because the whole idea was it was to Netflix and chill, not like Netflix and care, not any of this right. stuff. It was literally like, you're just supposed to have this on in the background. So you could be on these movies are made for you to be on your phone and you're not going to miss anything because there's no plot. <laughs> no, there, no, not really. Uh, so it grades out to a five point five. Yeah, essentially, yep. which is which is totally fine. So we'll move on to our next uh, or our final review for this week. I will say, and it's funny because we talked about the MCU uh, via the Comic Con stuff because I think that was really important to touch on. Obviously, but this is like the first week where we don't have a mcu thing to review it feels like in forever like via either a show or a movie and naturally we're talking about it because of comic-con um but we have a television review a series review uh from fx and it is the bear not it's not a real bear mind you it is a uh, culinary show ish, you know, and we're big Top Chef fans here oh, yeah. on the BXG. So, and then I think um, Greg will be able able to maybe give a little bit of insight here as well, just based on um, his experience working in uh, various restaurants. But Jeremy Allen White stars in the lead is Carmen Carmi Berzato Berzetto. Uh Jeremy's probably most well known for his role as Philip Gallagher on the acclaimed HBO series Shameless. He's joined by Ebon Moss Bach Bachrick, uh, who plays his his fake cousin Richie, and then um various other uh various other characters mixed in with some cameos, Joel McHale, John Bernthal. Oliver Platt, others. Uh, and it's a story of a uh, fine dining chef, a young chef from the fine dining world returns to Chicago to run his family sandwich shop after his brother uh, committed suicide and left the restaurant to him. Um, general thoughts. I love this show. I was a big fan. Oh, yeah. So... I heard really good things about it and I just, we, it was on the list of things to watch and just other things we were catching up on. And, you know, we, <laughs> we went to Chicago and then right, right. let's go and watch this now. And I'm really glad we did. I mean, it's still very good. I imagine if you don't go to Chicago literally two days before you started or a day before, right. I think when we came back, but to go to Chicago and have all this fresh and to see it, it was like such a, the city's a character in this show mm -hmm. and you feel it more after you go there. Um, our initial thing was we'll watch a couple episodes and, you know, we'll just kind of keep this going. Started at seven 30. We just went through all eight episodes, one sitting, didn't stop and yeah. never felt like stopping. We were never like, Oh, should we, we just was like, Nope, we'll just keep going. Cause they're like 27 minute episodes and they fly by. It's not just, they're just not 27. They are quick 27 and it's so good. Um, I, you know, there's some backlash about like some people, you know, commenting like this isn't really how the restaurant works. And it's like, well, you still have to remember it's a fictional show. So you can't have it exactly how a restaurant works. But if you're getting, you know, most of it correct, then 
people probably shouldn't complain because it still was like a lot of fun. Like I said, it whips through. I think everybody in this show is great. Perfectly cast. One of those shows where like everybody works and it just was fun. It, to me, it was just a fun show. Leaves you on like a cool cliffhanger about knowing you're going to get, you know, just I think at this point, everyone knows it's going to have a season two. Yep, it was and, confirmed. Got ready to confirm. Yeah, and so it's it just really works. And it's so rare, I think, now to have a show that isn't prestige television in the sense of like, you know, one hour drama and, mm-hmm. you know, big, you know, bigger than like, this is very small. This is a literally the smallest thing you could have. It's literally just a restaurant in this kind of not even deep Chicago. It's like outskirts Chicago. And it's really just pertaining with these people in this restaurant it cannot be smaller than this. And it, for it to be so well done and to matter so much, like people really, really like this show. And I'm one of them, you're one of them too. And that's cool to me. It's like, it's rare to get something like this. And it feels like a phenomenon that it's good to be a part of. Like I felt kind of weird not being a part of it initially, but then I was like, I'm so glad that I did Chicago person and did it. I just really liked it. I thought everybody was good. And I'll like, have you obviously comment that I can just, I'll relate a couple things about the restaurant, nothing major. Um, but go ahead. Would you, you liked it? What, what stood out? Yeah. Um, a couple of different things. First of all, uh, the lead character, um, I, Car- um, Carmi, yeah, Carmi, but the actor, um, Jason White. he played a very similar character in Shameless. Hmm. More of them. Have you watched Shameless? You know, I've watched like an episode here and there. I've never actually watched it full and through, but I knew yeah. who he was. Yeah, I, I mean, I would recommend it at least the first several seasons, but he plays a similar character. He's a little bit more well put together in this show than he was in Shameless, but Shameless also takes place in Chicago. And so he's just got that vibe about him. Um, I think that what I really liked about this show is there's a million court drama shows. There's a million cop shows. There's a million, you know, doctor shows. There's a million at this point, superhero shows, right? There's all these shows that just take these well, uh, you know, these beaten path genres and just, just grind them into the dust. But this is not a setting that you get really to look at outside of like reality shows like top right. chef or like, you know, some, you know, hell's kitchen, whatever, some of these different uh, some of these different reality shows where they go in or whatever, it's not, it just seems like an, an area that's sort of ripe for the picking in terms of these types of drama dramatizations. And I thought that they did a tremendous job of making it interesting, making you care about every single one of the characters in their development, Marcus and the baking, Tina coming around on the system, the whole way through and I just felt like this was one of those we all we we often say less is more right when it comes to these things and when you had this show there wasn't I'll tell, in a sense it kind of reminds me of PBC where we said with PBC there's not a there's not a second on screen that's wasted right. and that's this could have been an hour-long show right they could have dragged it out and like thrown some bullshit romance story in there or some, you know, fake trumped up drama. Like they, it felt like they were going in that direction with Richie and his kid and the Coke stuff and all this, but they made it, they kept it where it needed to be. And they kept the focus on the restaurant and why it was important. And I felt like by doing that and keeping the episodes exactly as long as they needed to be it really served the show well and i thought that it was well written uh it was tight from every angle it was entertaining it was a fine it was at times funny i would say the 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 emotion that i got most was just anxiety and stress because of how chaotic it was and that's kind of i think what you'll what you'll talk about a little bit but like the episodes like the first episode where it's just people screaming and yeah. trying to get a handle on the situation, like I could feel my chest tighten a little bit because mm. of just how stress stress inducing that that situation was. But yeah, I'm I'm very excited to see where they go with this in the future. I think that that this was not necessarily something that they 
thought was going to be guaranteed for a second season. And it, like you said, has become this sort of phenomenon where everybody's just kind of checking it out. And I do think that eight half hour or so episodes, the last episode I think is like 47, but having those short, tight episodes in a small episode count is going to really benefit people as a, um, an entry point. And it's very accessible from that angle. Whereas something like, cause I've told people I've like, listen, under the banner of heaven is great, but that shit is heavy and yeah. it is long. Yeah. And I think that that is a distraction for some people, but this was just like the perfect, the perfect mix. The only thing that I found weird, and this is maybe can speak to some of the complaints that some people are having was this is supposed to be a, like a sandwich shop. And somehow mm-hmm. they're also rolling out this like fine, like French, you know, this, this like fine cuisine or whatever. And it just felt weird that they were trying to force that in just almost, <clears throat> I feel like just to make the point that that's the world that he came from. And that's the world that Sydney came from his, the sous chef. So it was just kind of weird that they were sort of like trying to sneak that angle in. But other than that, that was really the only thing that I found weird. I wouldn't even necessarily call it a flaw. But I thought the show was, was- yeah, and it, you know, I worked at you know one one restaurant, um, and I you know worked there for a little bit more than two years. You know, really left there really good terms. Still, you know, and but that anxiety is something that was so real and like kind of freaked me out a lot. And it was, I I always think of like there's you know when I was leading the pizza line, just the easiest way to kind of explain this is you know, and all it takes is one thing to be screwed up. And if you're got nonstop, you know, you're doing a a bunch of pizzas in a row or something like that, you know, you have all the tickets laid out in front of you from beginning of service to end, you know, at the restaurant we were at, that's how it worked. A lot of times you knew exactly what you're doing, especially during COVID and with just takeout and all it takes is one thing to screw up and then everything's off the line. And you you go from being fine to like immediately in the weeds and to feel that and to see them go through that was like so real to me at least. And like, mm-hmm. you know, I haven't, you know, I didn't go to culinary school. I did this as, you know, something. So I just have something different to do because I needed, I felt like I really needed a change. And so I don't have that background of that, but all these people that are in this, you know, in this kitchen don't really have that experience either. And right. people mm-hmm. want to learn and they, they actually make that decision to want to learn but there is that I was like thrown in there and I became like someone that people really trusted and had a good relationship with, but there were moments like, I never saw like a real screaming match, Mm -hmm. but there were definitely times where you'd walk in and you could feel like the tension between people or something like that, that is just so real. And only to me can only exist in that kind of, not just sort of like a, a restaurant, but it's just something where it's so small. You can't get away. Like there's some jobs where you can get away from someone, but in a kitchen, you can't like, There's just, and that they did a really good job of that. Like they go outside and smoke or something like that. But once you're on the line, that's it. And unless you walk out, you know, and just quit or whatever, you're, you're not going anywhere. You still have to deal. Somebody screwed up or somebody made you mad. And I thought that's what they really did well was that thing of like, you're kind of just confined with these people and good, bad, and ugly. And as, as nervous, as nerve wracking as that was, the thing I will say is like that relief and they had the same thing as once they were done, that relief that you have is like also palpable. It shouldn't mm. be you know, something. And I think a lot of times they always just show the, the stresses of this job, but not that feeling at the end of the night when you actually did it. Cause you don't, sometimes you don't feel like you're going to. And then and it was almost the way the show was all, like the beginning of the show to the very end was almost that feeling of like, it was so chaotic in the beginning. And at the end we find out they're going to change the restaurant. It was kind of a sense of relief. Like mm. we're just going to close it up. We're going to start something new. And it was like that feeling of like anxiety and it'll be, I'm sure crazy things will happen then too. But no, like you said, it was really well done. I think, I hope that it's a thing that maybe starts other producers and TV writers that, oh, we can do 27 minutes. We don't have to write our long. That's that's what I hope comes from this is you can show other things and you can pick something very small and it doesn't have to be cops and doesn't have to be in the law room, in a courtroom. It can just be this. And I think I, I really think this is probably going to be like the beginning of at least something to some degree. Yeah. I hope so. I think that you can, like you said, if you are efficient with the way that you write, you can still have something that's really powerful in a short amount of time. 
you know, and I think mm-hmm. that I'm just interested in, uh, like, uh, like I said, I think the thing that I liked the most about it was this is just something that we don't see a lot. And I felt like, you know, one of the things that we've always said right. since we started this was we want to see, you know, people do new things. And I felt like this was something, and I think going back to, to PBC, part of the reason why we liked it so much was it was like accountants. And that's not something that you see other than maybe like a bit character on a show like the office or something like that, but it was different. It was, it was something that was fresh. And I just feel like that is, there needs to be more of that. There's so many spaces in this world to explore in many different ways. It doesn't have to be like, this is labeled a comedy. I don't know how, like there were funny parts, but I don't necessarily like view this as an out and out comedy or even like a, like a smart comedy or something like that. But yeah, I mean, I just, I was just so impressed with how they were able to create something that was just kind of different. And I really, really, really liked it. But I'm the thing about this though, is that I think what's that? Sorry. You you cut out a little bit. Just very believable. Yeah. I'm sorry. Just very believable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I think so. So I'm excited for season two. I just don't know how, I don't think I think it's going to be a while before we get it because oh, sure. I don't think that they're necessarily expecting another season out of this and <laughs> it's going to take time to prep that. So, uh, media recommendations. Uh, I was this show. Uh, yeah, and agreed. I, you know, <clears throat> yeah, and I would just say that I've been just kind of honestly, I've just been kind of chilling, uh, yeah. watching things, you know, on YouTube, things like that. Uh, Game prep for this trip, things like that. So nothing, nothing too major. Uh, we'll probably dig in. I got a couple books on reserve that I'll be getting into next week before I start in the school year in a couple more weeks. But I would just, I would recommend this show. Yeah. Uh, one, yeah. Yeah, I think that's where I'm at. Is I would recommend this, and and outside of that, uh, not really much of anything. But because I was on, you know, I was on a vacation, a little bit of a vacation too, and we're also in the dog days where like, yeah, kind of and tv's kind of sleepy and right right yeah Yeah. so you can catch the bxg podcast on uh fridays at 9 a.m eastern standard time 6 a.m pacific 4 a.m hawaiian aloha on podcast services around the globe google apple spotify amazon wherever you get your podcasts on all podcast uh platforms and services you can check us on social media, Instagram at BXG Podcast, at GT Phils, at Alpha Donut Guy, Twitter at BXG Podcast, at Greg GT Philson, I'm sorry, uh, and at Alpha Donut Guy, mm-hmm. Facebook.com, uh, our group, Facebook.com slash BXG Podcast, and our YouTube channel, BXG Podcast, for reviews, trailer reactions, all sorts of, uh, of shenanigans. Um, yeah, uh, we're taking a break for a little bit from the Monday episodes, uh, so it's just for right now the Friday thing, and then we'll we'll see what we want to do with that. But if we want to do plenty of content though for those that are catching yeah. up, plenty of stuff for you to to watch if you need a little Monday hang. Yeah, yeah, lots of still lots of videos um, over on the YouTube channel. Some of which are exclusive. Uh, we don't do trailer reactions on the podcast, so all of our trailer reactions are on uh on on the youtube channel for things like i am groot uh um, dungeons and dragons I'm um, groot. um the lord of the rings i'm groot the monsters i'm groot yeah so there you <laughs> have it uh take care have a delightful weekend and thanks for listening or watching yeah enjoy that enjoy your weekend everybody enjoy your weekend <laughs> <laughs>